Hello Rosebuds and welcome to this video. So I've been gone for a while because I have not been inspired to do anything and inspiration is not a big thing really for me because I feel like it doesn't, it's not a real thing. Plainly, I've just been lazy and I just have not been doing art. I've been doing other stuff and hanging out with friends. So yeah, so I've been really slacking on the art train. So here I go trying to plow right into doing art again. I'm going to continue on on my topic of art style and how to really find your art style because I really get a lot of these questions of how do I find my art style? Where do I look to find my art style? How do you get an art style? And so many very variations of this whole how to get an art style. And well, I kind of understand it because I went through that phase and that I was like, I don't have an art style or whatever. And like as an artist that grows and grows each year, I realize I do sort of have an art style, but I do not have a consistent art style that I continuously use. And I just dabble a lot in different kinds of art styles. So what I really recommend people is to learn anatomy first because art styles really are defined by how you draw your characters and like when you draw and an art style also defines on exaggeration a lot of art styles have certain things that are exaggerated so you can consider um what is it um what are those things called characterize characters Carap something characterized where they like really exaggerate people's faces and you see them at carnivals. I cannot remember what it's called. My brain is just like, nah, I took a nap earlier. So my brain does not, bleh. but anyways, so you really need to learn how to exaggerate things to, to a point where it looks normal. So I really do recommend that learning some kind of um, anatomy would really help you um, with your art style. So if you can draw real people, you can exaggerate real people. And that's really what helped me when I draw people because I, I draw people a lot. And I'm pretty sure I would do the same thing if I drew animals, which I really need to start doing. I need to draw more animals. Maybe that's what I need to do, draw animals. But anywho, art styles. So I go on to gesture, like gesture websites where they um, show gesture poses so that you can learn different types of gesture poses so you're fluent. There's like a timer thing so that you can have a certain timer of how long you should be drawing this certain pose. So I do that sometimes. I don't do it very often, but I should do it more often now so that my um, poses are more um, fluent. But you can also use this as a way of anatomy. You must be aware that sometimes there will be nudity, but there is an option to turn that off, which I usually do because I'm squeamish of the human body. <laughs> but yeah, you can just pause it so you don't have it time out on you. That way you can continuously um, figure out how the human body works and just imitate those poses and try to draw them. That's the best way I could give you to practice. You can also use other books. I strongly do not recommend copying other artists' way of drawing things because they exaggerate things to the point that they know that it looks good. But once you do um, figure out drawing from humans from pictures, it will be much easier to go. There's like a tons of of gesture drawing stuff on Pinterest and um, studying and stuff. Once you get the human anatomy, um, understand it quite well, you can move on to um, using photo or other artist tips on how to draw things. Now, this next video um, I have is me testing out different kinds of art styles because I drew my two art styles that I consistently use for animation and for my comic book that I don't update very often, but <laughs> then I decided I was gonna draw more variations of how I exaggerate my characters and see what 
in those exaggerations that I had, I that <sighs> what in those exaggerations that I continuously notice that I do in my exaggerations that is sort of like a in betweener thing. So when you're exaggerating, you have to exaggerate something else. You cannot exaggerate one thing and not exaggerate another thing. Otherwise, it will look really, really weird. So I do recommend um, if you have a art studio or somewhere that you do draw, make sure that you have a mirror next to you so that you can see your proportions on your own self. That's what I do. I have a mirror in my room to see what proportions that I need or what facial expressions that I'm trying to draw. It's sort of a good way that artists use to help themselves draw. And it's very easy if you have hard times drawing hands. You can just do the hand gesture in the mirror and then draw that. Let's see, what else? Another thing is, um, I don't know if I'm there at that part of the video, but in p the part of the video, I do see where certain proportion places. So if you draw your eyes really big, sometimes it's going to have like a smaller nose or probably not even a nose in your art style. And and then also the ear placement has to be around where the uh, eyes and nose are because that's where they generally are in the human anatomy. So if you put your character's ears a bit lower, like it will end up looking like it's on their neck or on their chin and it would look really, really weird. Another thing that I've noticed in a lot of anatomy exaggerated styles is that the elbows will always be around the midsection of the torso. So pretty much where the belly button will be. That's where um, your elbows of your character should be. And so if you make your character's arms really long, you should probably make their torso pretty long too to go with it. And if you do exaggerate the arms, you probably also have to exaggerate the legs to be a little longer too because the hands will always be on the thighs and you can just stand up in your chair and test it on yourself to see where your hands are on your thighs and see if that looks right on your character. So whatever you really decide on your characters, really test them out and just look through what you like and what you dislike. I really recommend doing it this way where you just take one character and exaggerate it in very different ways and see what kind of art style you really like. Another thing that you can do for taking inspiration, because I got this a lot on my other video that I made of ranting about art styles, is that um, taking inspiration from other artists. And I do say that can be a good thing, but it also can be a really bad thing to do. Because some people mistake this, oh, it's just inspira- ins words, I can't use words. It's only inspired by this artist. And they continue draw like that. And I feel like you shouldn't take inspiration from only one artist. You should take inspiration from a lot of artists, not just one, a lot. Like maybe around 10 different artists that you really like. So if you have 10, <sighs> so I recommend doing this. Take 10 of the most favorite artists that you know, that you really like their art style, and take maybe five to seven different pieces that you like of theirs and line them up in a row and then put different rows of each artist and circle the things that you really like about their style and then look at all of those drawings in a whole of all the other artists and see what what of these um drawings do you like the most about them is it because most of these artists have uh, a lot of big eyes in their drawings? Are they more of cartoon styles or are they more anime styles or realism exaggeration styles or um, chibi styles? Just really look at what what about these drawings that you like about them and if, you, if big eyes are what you're very drawn into or really simple tiny eyes then you should go with drawing really tiny eyes for your characters. But you gotta also remember the exaggeration part too. Let's say for my art style, I really like characters that look cartoony and I really like um, characters that have like really noodly arms and practically no wrists. And I really like um, 
rectangular or yeah rectangle shaped torsos so that's what I really use a lot in my drawings is that kind of setup so through all my variations there's a variation of those things that I like I'm not a big fan of like the tiny eyes I really like big eyes because big eyes give a lot of expression and I do a lot sometimes I won't draw noses and sometimes I will I'm I'm still at the edge where I don't really know if I like drawing noses or not but I can't decide if which style I like more and then after that I know for sure I do like the noodly arms and I will continuously draw either noodly arms or thick noodly arms I don't know it's just something that I really like about art and it's really doing it through those ways that you really find your own style and figure out what you like to draw and then you can just invent the ways of how you like to draw them and I think this is the best way I personally can give you to figuring out how to find your own art style there can be other artists that can give you similar advice just keep drawing what you like and keep experimenting don't just stay with one thing because you might think you like one thing and then you try a different thing and you end up liking that better so just keep on experimenting keep practicing and sooner or later you will get there you will get better and you will continuously get better so i hope this video was not that long and i'm sorry if some of this was a little rambly have a good day rosebuds sorry for being gone so long Thank <music> you.